cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and I'm finally back with another episode of How to Make Anything, my series where I try to teach you step by step how to make something really cool. And today we're focusing on puzzles. There's a good chance you came from the other video I posted today where I shared my whole collection of 3D printed puzzles. But today, for this episode, we're gonna focus on these puzzle cubes because they are some really cool puzzles. You can make endless different variations of these puzzle cubes and they're actually a bit easier to make than you would imagine. So we're gonna go through every step of designing these things in Fusion 360 and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to make one yourself or maybe something else using the same concepts. The subject and timing of this video is not random. It's actually because I'm launching a competition today with my mini factory where you can win a Dremel 3D45 3D printer if you just make a really cool puzzle and share it with us on my mini factory. I'll put links to that in the description, but hopefully this video will help you get started and give you some ideas. And I'm also gonna show you more about that printer near the end of this video. But first, of course, we're just gonna get into Fusion 360 and learn how to make a puzzle cube. Let's do it. Let's start out by creating a new sketch and clicking on this top plane right here. And we're gonna draw a center rectangle. Now this tool normally won't be up here on the toolbar, but you can add tools to the toolbar by clicking this little arrow. That's useful for anything that you're gonna use very often. So once again, you'd go here to sketch and then you click that little arrow and you can add a tool. So let's create that center rectangle from the origin and then I'm gonna hit D and add some dimension. So we'll make this 15 millimeters and then this second side we could also dimension but instead I'm gonna select both of them while holding control and then add the equal constraint. That way if I change this one to 20, all the sides change. So that's just handy for making adjustments. So we made a 15 millimeter square and the next thing we're gonna do is stop the sketch and click this extrude button, select the square, and we'll extrude that 15 millimeters as well to create a perfect 15 millimeter cube. This is gonna be the unit for our puzzle cube. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and create a grid of these cubes using this rectangular pattern tool. So I'll switch this to selecting bodies, I'll click our cube, and then you can go ahead and switch between extent to spacing because we wanna work on the spacing between each individual cube. And since our cube is 15 millimeters, we're gonna make it 15.25 to add a little bit of clearance between each cube. Let's click direction here and then select either an axis or an edge of the cube that tells us the direction we want to pattern. So I've gotta type in that distance again, 15.25. And as you can see, it creates this row of cubes with that 0.25 millimeter distance in between. And I'm gonna go into the second distance here and put 15.25 as well. And that gives us this kind of flat grid of squares. Now we're gonna just do a little three by three cube here. So you can change the quantity depending on how complex you want the puzzle to be. For this one, we're just gonna do three. We'll hit okay. And then to get the height of the cube, we're gonna just go ahead and do another rectangular pattern since you can't do it all at once. But now we're just gonna go ahead and select all of these cubes and for the direction, we'll choose one of the vertical edges of the cube. And then once again, we'll do the spacing at 15.25, or negative in this case to make it go upwards. But there we go, we've got our grid of cubes, and these are all the individual units for our puzzle. If you printed this out, you could stack all the cubes to make a bigger cube, but we wanna turn these units into larger shapes that will connect to each other and make this into a more interesting puzzle. And this is where you get to be creative and decide what you want those shapes to be, how you want your puzzle to look. I wanna start with this kind of plus sign shape on the top. So I'm gonna zoom in and select this side face of the center cube. And then I'll click the extrude button again and I'll just drag this arrow into the cube next to it, make sure that join is selected. And then when I hit okay, it'll combine that into a single rectangular prism. I'll do that again for this face, pull it into place and we've got a longer shape. Now, since we're doing the plus sign, I'll go here, drag that one in, okay. Spin around, click this one, drag it in, okay. So there we go, we've got our plus sign. 
Now let's say we want to connect the very center cube of this grid to that plus sign, but there's no way to reach it as it is. So what I'm just going to do is right click on one of these corner cubes and I'll just temporarily hide it. So you can right click and click on this show hide button or just press V. But when I hide that, I can now zoom in and I'll find the face of that very center cube, click on that and extrude it downward into our plus sign. So you can't exactly see it, but now we've got this plus sign plus another little cube going up into our whole puzzle cube. And now's a good time to go ahead and start changing the appearance of these different bodies just so that we can distinguish them from one another. So I'll just grab this green color and drag that onto that part. So now we can tell that we made that completed shape. Great, so we've got our first shape. Now let's say maybe on the opposite face, we wanna create a kind of loop. We're gonna do the same thing, clicking that face and we're gonna extrude it through. You can actually extrude through several cubes at once like this to make it a little bit quicker. So just click the face and drag it all the way through so that it overlaps those two cubes. And just like that, we're gonna create this whole circle. Well, it's not really a circle, but you know, a kind of squarish donut shape. For this last one, you wanna make sure not to select this face because it's already merged. So you can see the face that is selected is too wide. So we'll just go ahead and select this one that's still a single cube and extrude it into that direction. And we can also set this to a two side extrude so that we can extrude in both directions as a single command. And then we'll make sure to join it. There we go, we've got our donut. So this may look good, but we actually made a little mistake and something that we have to be aware of when we're making this puzzle cube. If I hide this part that I just made, you will notice that there is this center cube and it's got nowhere to attach to. I mean, we could connect it to that plus sign, but otherwise we've just got this isolated cube that doesn't have any adjacent cubes to connect to. So one option is to connect it like that, but then we're not gonna have very many parts and this puzzle won't be too interesting. So I tried that out, but I decided to go back and instead I'm just not gonna make that full loop for that second part that we made. What I can do is just go to the timeline here and drag it backwards until we're at the point where here I made this U shape. So we'll just leave it like that. We'll delete all the features afterwards and we'll just make the shape this U instead of the donut. And that'll give us more to work with for the next shapes that we're gonna create. Now that we did that, we have a way to connect this cube to another shape by just going in this direction. So that kind of solved that problem. And that's something you gotta be careful with as you're making these cubes. So I'll go ahead and extrude this way maybe. And maybe we'll go around and make an interesting corner shape here. We'll have this one go in here and then maybe have this one go in to there. It's really up to you exactly what the shapes you wanna make are. But like I said, you just wanna make sure not to leave a cube all on its own. In fact, we kind of did it again right here. So maybe we'll just take that unit and connect it to this red shape. But once again, we've got a rather big shape. So maybe we wanna take away this cube right here. Instead of going back, I'm just gonna select this face here and do the extrude command, but this time I'm gonna cut away at the shape instead of adding to it. And I'll just select this corner here to make it line up with that bottom corner. And then I can go ahead and select this cube and do an extrude and then select the corner next to it here to make it come out to where it needs to be. So that's kind of another workaround, a way to adjust these cubes. Maybe here we'll make this a corner piece like that going in three directions. I'll select this face, extrude it in, select this face, extrude it in. So as you can see, it's a lot of repetition and just figuring out the shapes you can make to connect into each other in an interesting way. And I like to have all the shapes be kind of different too. Another thing you wanna be aware of is thinking about how this is gonna print. So there are certain shapes that you won't be able to print without support material, but I'm being very careful to make sure that every piece I print can be laid flat and won't have any overhangs. Although they might need to be rotated in different directions before we actually print them. And we'll do that later. We'll go ahead and finish things up here, giving each part its own color. There we go. We can bring back all our bodies and preview what our cube will look like in this super colorful rendering. There we go. It looks pretty good. As you can see, all the parts have at least three different cubes stuck together. 
which is what you want. You don't really want the parts to be too tiny. This is probably as small as you want to get. So we could be done here, but I like to go ahead and finesse things a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add a chamfer. You can hit S and just type in the command chamfer like that, or you can find it under the drop down menu here under modify and click chamfer. And what I'm going to do here is go ahead and select an edge here. And let's figure out how much we want to chamfer this. One millimeter looks a bit small, but you can preview different sizes. We're going to go with 1.5. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hold control or command on Mac and select the remaining corners. And I'm going to select every single outside corner on this shape. So these are all outside corners. This one is an inside corner. And you don't want to select that because if we do that, it kind of creates this weird connection point. So if we just connect the outside corners, it comes to a nice point like that. So let's go ahead and go around and make sure that we get every single one. Whenever you let go of control, it'll preview what it looks like. So it's pretty easy to notice when you forgot to chamfer a point. Now, if we look over here, something weird is going on. And this is actually just a glitch with Fusion 360. So hopefully this will get fixed at some point. But for now, the fix that you can do is just to say OK with that chamfer then go back and do another chamfer, and then just select those edges that have the weird thing going on, give it that 1.5. And well, it just led to another glitch in this case. That's usually not what's gonna happen, but as you can see, it accidentally includes this inside corner. So that's a weird glitch going on with Fusion 360. So what we can do now is go back to that last chamfer and unselect those two edges that were giving us problems, hit OK, now do another chamfer and only select those two corners. And there we go. Now we've got chamfered sides. It did mess with the corners a bit, but for now that's okay. Looks good enough. We're gonna go ahead and hide that body, bring in the next body, and then go through and do the exact same thing with this body. We're gonna give it that same 1.5 millimeter chamfer and then select all the outside edges. Luckily we didn't get any glitches with that one. And the same goes for all the remaining shapes that we made. So as you can imagine, as you get more complex with these puzzle cubes, the amount of work is definitely going to increase. Here we only have five different shapes to work on, but if you make it a 4x4 cube or a 5x5 cube, that number is going to increase pretty quickly. Now there's another condition that you might run into with a shape like we do here, where you'll notice there's this kind of weird little corner right here because of that tolerance that we have built into our shape. But if you just make sure to chamfer that tiny edge, it ends up working pretty well. All right, we'll do the last one. And here we go, our final cube. I don't know about you, but I think those chamfers make it look a lot friendlier, a lot nicer. So I always end up going in and doing that to finish up my cubes. Finally, I can go here and double click to name each of these parts. It's gonna help us when we're saving this out to stay a little bit organized and not get too confused with all these random body names. So I'll just go in alphabetical order, A through E. And well, from here, you could save it out. You could also try to do some interesting things to make the puzzle more special. So maybe we want to draw on this face and put in a circle and we can extrude cut that away so that it gives us some kind of surface detail to help assemble the puzzle. Another thing that might be interesting is to select a face like this plus sign we could offset this outline and cut into that shape as well and make it hollow like this. Maybe you could stick a puzzle inside of the puzzle pieces, some kind of puzzle cube inception. I don't know. I'm just playing around with ideas here, but for this particular cube, I'm just going to keep it simple, keep it as it is. So to save this out, I'm going to hide everything except for one body. I'll right click on it, save as STL. And then as far as the settings here, you don't really have to mess with it. This cube is already a super simple file, so whether you change the refinement to high or low, the file is gonna be exactly the same. We'll hit okay, save that out, and then go ahead and do that for the rest of our models as well. Here's the file for my five by five cube, and I just wanna show you how quickly the number of parts increases. So here you can see we've got a ton of bodies, and if you look at that timeline, I did a bunch of extrude commands. So really, this is super simple to make. It's just a lot of repetition and coming up with the right shapes so that they'll fit together in a cool way. One final step I like to do 
is to orient all the parts so that they'll be ready to print. So here I'm using 3D Builder, but there's a lot of different softwares that let you rotate and edit parts. But here, since I'm on my PC, I'm just gonna use this 3D Builder and make sure to rotate everything so that it can be printed without any support materials. And I'll save those as STLs and just overwrite the files. All right, now it's time to print. And since the prize for this puzzle competition is the Dremel 3D45 printer, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox the one that I got and print my puzzle cube on this printer. So the really cool thing about this printer is unlike a lot of the cheaper ones that I get, it comes pretty much fully assembled. You don't have to put any screws together or anything. You just gotta take it all apart and do the setup that is very easy and it'll guide you through everything. It's got this cool removable build plate. The prints look great. Let me know if you guys wanna see more of the unboxing of this printer and I can go into depth. Trust me, I filmed everything. But anyways, as you can see, the parts look great, so I'm excited to print out our puzzle cubes. I also really like the cloud-based printing system. A lot of printers nowadays come with Wi-Fi capabilities, but they're pretty annoying to work with. Dremel has this full online ecosystem that lets you prepare, slice, and send your parts to the printer all from your browser, and it works pretty well. It'll get hung up on more complicated files, but for these puzzle cubes, it worked great. I was able to arrange them all into a single build plate and send them to my printer. So you can see here, it's just like any slicer. You can decide if you want supports or not, how detailed you want it to be. And then you can preview the print. And from there, you can send it straight to your printer. I also really like that the Dremel has a built-in camera. So you can actually watch your print happening from wherever you are. You can see I've got two printers running here, running two different colors so that I can have a kind of cool multicolored cube. And when you're all done with the print, it'll actually save out that video as a quick little time lapse, which is a fun feature. I can really see why schools like to use this Dremel printer because it's got a really nice online ecosystem. It keeps track of who's printing what, how much material was used, and all that in one little place. Pretty cool. Here we've got our cube printing out, and as you can see, it prints nice and quick, and the quality is pretty impeccable. Let's go ahead and remove those parts from the build plate and it's ready to be assembled. Here it is all assembled. The pieces come together and go apart really easily. So that 0.25 millimeter clearance that we gave between the cubes is pretty good. All right guys, we did it. We made a puzzle cube. Awesome. Hopefully you're inspired to make a cool puzzle of your own, especially since I've got that competition with my mini factory where you can win a 3D printer if you just design a really cool, innovative, interesting puzzle that can be 3d printed all right well that's it for this episode of how to make anything i hope you had fun i hope you learned some new things i hope you're excited to make some cool 3d models especially some 3d puzzles and maybe sign up for that competition check out a link in the description or visit myminifactory.com to join that competition or to download all these 3d puzzle files for free so you can 3d print them yourself let me know what you guys think about that Dremel printer. Does it look cool? Do you want me to review it further down the road? We'll see. But that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>